You're watching Reality Check. The elections are upon us and there is a clear sense that the opposition has lost its grip on the narrative. One of the reasons for this is that the anti-Modi coalition, especially led by the Congress, has faltered with its alliances. Either not able to seal traditional alliances like with the RJD and the NCP or tie up new ones like with the Aam Aadmi Party in Delhi or the left in West Bengal. The Congress's attempts to send out an olive branch in Uttar Pradesh to the SP-BSP alliance by saying it will not contest in seats where the SP-BSP leaders are standing was rebuffed both by Mayawati and Akhilesh, both sending out tweets saying that the Congress should not try to spread confusion about the alliance in Uttar Pradesh. This crisis of sorts has become so acute that others are weighing in. Sharad Pawar has been involved in trying to negotiate the Congress Aam Aadmi Party Alliance in Delhi. This is what he was doing in Delhi today. Yashwan Sinha, formerly of the BJP, sent out a series of tweets offering what he called unsolicited advice to Rahul Gandhi saying, please finalize your alliances in Bihar, Jharkhand, Delhi and elsewhere today. It is already too late. For now, none of this seems to be working. Sheila Dixit says she's against the Aam Aadmi Party Alliance in Delhi and the AAP says they're going ahead anyway because the Congress is simply not serious. I believe that the Congress is capable of doing everything itself. And I would go by that. But if a decision is taken by everybody contrary to what I think, fine. Chahe wo Paschim Bengal ho, chahe wo Bihar ho, chahe wo Andhra Pradesh ho, har jagah Congress ke liye jo Compare this now to the BJP, which has been much more decisive with closing deals, even with prickly allies like the Shiv Sena in Maharashtra or the AGP in Assam. Overall, if you were to just take a look now at the graphics, which is our big alliance tracker, to look at where these two different alliances stand, the NDA and the UPA as well as those who might be inclined towards either side. So let's put that graphic up on the screen. If you actually look at it in terms of sheer numbers, the NDA has of course a host of its allies like the BJP, uh, Shiv Sena, Kali Dal, the ADMK and all its Tamil Nadu allies and then of course in Bihar with the JDU, the LJP and so on and then a string of allies in the Northeast. The UPA again has a long list of allies which is, again, if you look at it just in sheer numerical terms, the UPA actually has an edge. And we can actually put up that graphics for you for the alliances by numbers. The Congress in 2014 had 11 allies. In 2019, it has 21 allies. The BJP had 17 allies in 2014. It's actually dropped in 2019 to 16 allies. So in terms of the sheer numbers, the Congress does have more allies, but there are a lot of X factors in the Congress's alliance package. The X factors, as I mentioned, like with the NCP, like with the CPI, CPM alliance, like with the RJD. So it's not just about how many allies you have, it's about how many are sealed up and how significant those alliances are as well. Okay, let's uh, go to panel. We have... Uh, Ashwini Kumar, senior leader of the Congress party, who is on the show with us. Sudhin Bhadoria, leader of the BSP, uh, is with us. And uh, Arti Jairat is here with us, senior journalist. Great to have you, as always. So, Ashwini Kumar, if I can just ask you, this is a problem, is it not? That you are in a position where we are days away from the election beginning, and none of your key alliances, at least even the traditional alliances have been fully sealed. Your well-wishers like Yashwan Sinha are saying, get on with it, it's, it's too late. Well, your graphic has just informed us that we have more allies this time than we had in 2014. Our formidable alliances in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Jharkhand, etc., mm. etc., have been stitched up. Having said that, I cannot deny that stitching alliances is always a very tricky uh, job for the simple reason <coughs> that all parties seek to achieve two objectives which are sometimes 
diametrically opposed to each other. Mm. One is to retain or expand your footprint in different states uh, yes. politically. Yes. And the other is to take into consideration the arithmetics of, the pol of uh, electoral politics in order to ensure that a common political opponent is defeated and, but actually, and Kumar, you win. Now, this is a difficult uh, objective uh, to achieve at the same time. But the no, but fact remains yeah. that parties have come together uh, to serve larger purposes. No, but if you say, when you talk about, when I, when I had to qualify the fact that when I said that you might have a longer tail in terms of alliances, many of these deals have not been stitched up. The RJD deal, is it going to happen or not? We don't know. The NCP alliance has not formally been announced. A lot of these are simply still in the air. What does this these say are, about uh, the leadership of the say, party? Well, let me tell you, this is a work in progress. Uh, if you can't say that these have been finalized, you can't also say that they will not be finalized. I'm hopeful, the party is hopeful, the leadership is fully seized hmm. of the importance of the alliances. Uh, the right. leadership is fully uh, at the job. We have a very senior person in, the, uh, in um, uh, Mr. A.K. Antony, who's uh, uh, leading the uh, work uh, of forging alliances. We have to take into consideration the ground realities in the states, and right. these are not always uh, easy, uh, easy, easy things to achieve. Okay. Uh, we know Let the case of Delhi. We would like an alliance, but we also have to go by what the state unit says. Okay. All right. Let me go across to Sudin Badoria. Also, Mr. Lanka Dinakar of the TDP is joining us as well via Skype from Vijayawada. Um, Mr. Badoria, you know, it's one thing for us we, to criticize the Congress and say, look, you're not getting your alliances together in time, but in Uttar Pradesh, <coughs> When they actually sent out an olive branch to you and to the SP to say, look, we will not contest in seats where your leadership is standing, why did you react so strongly? Why did Mayawati react so strongly? It is ironical that a party which kept uh, calling us names in Madhya Pradesh, in Rajasthan, in Chhattisgarh, in mm. Karnataka, mm. and they called us the B team of the BJP. Mm. Where, as they did not even consider uh, proper enough to talking to us while sharing seats in those states. As far as UP is concerned, yes. uh, we uh, who got 23% vote in the assembly elections last time yeah. and Samajwadi party who got 22% vote yes. and along with RLD we are about 50% of the vote share in Uttar Pradesh <coughs> yes. and there they are saying that we will give you, uh, some seats to you. Mm. It is ironical. I think the alliance in UP is perfect to take on BJP. Yes. And we are strong enough to move into some other state. No, but if they are saying... It is uh, the no, no, but uh, Mr. Badoria, Congress party which is... No, no, Mr. Yeah. Badoria, they are they, saying, not saying they want to now be part of it. They are simply saying we will not contest in key seats which will lead to the BJP's advantage. What is the problem with that? I, I mean, it, this is also uh, not the uh, correct picture. Let, let me give you one seat in Uttar Pradesh, yes. and that is Badayu, where a sitting member of parliament, brother of Akhilesh Yadav, <laughs> Dharmen Yadav, is contesting. Mm. Now, they have put up a candidate uh, over there, and that candidate is going to take, after all it takes, some of our vote. But though in spite of their candidates contesting, it doesn't affect us, we will prove and the results will prove yeah. that their contesting has not affected us. And we will show yeah. that the people of Uttar Pradesh want a strong alternative to the BJP and which is there in the form of Gatbandan, which is already there with Bayan Mahavati, okay, I want to... Yadav and RLD. Okay, before Ashwini can respond to that, let me just get Aarti Jairat here. This almost seems like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for the Congress. <coughs> yeah, you know, and uh, I mean, honestly, as you said, that all they said was that we're just not going to contest these seven seats, yeah. right? I mean, they, these guys could have kept quiet or they could have said, okay, that's a nice gesture, like we're not contesting right yeah. really in Amethi. Instead of which, Mayavati hit out really hard. Yes. And this is the thing about, uh, you know, Mayavati's politics in the current scenario, hmm. that she seems to be hitting out 
as hard, if not harder, at the, at the Congress, Congress. Yeah, than at the BJP. Yes. You know, so, I mean, she's sending out mixed signals because, you know, at the end of the day... But even Basu, Akhilesh did also, by the way, in this yeah, case. Yeah, but Akhilesh, I think, is just following, uh, you know, Early. the lead from Mayavati because she's clearly the dominant partner in that uh, alliance. Mm. Mm. But that's the point. Listen, it's all about perception. It's a game of perception. And today... The BJP's alliance looks much more together, mm. looks much stronger, looks much more, you know, ready and set to fight the elections. Than the Congress. Than the Congress's alliance. And the Congress is looking, you know, I mean, they're looking completely scattered. The Delhi thing is the most ridiculous. It's on, off, on, off, on, off. Every yes. day the picture changes. Yes. And, you know, this uh, Ashwini is uh, saying that, uh, you know, it, our Delhi unit doesn't want it. Why? I thought they had just done a survey amongst the dead unit and Which the majority, the majority of, of people wanted said it. want an alliance with AAP. So then what's holding it back? Ashwini Kumar, I mean, you know, respond to what Mr. Bhadoria <clears throat> said, that you attack the BSP all this time, then you try to extend an olive branch to them at the last minute. Look, in politics, there are no permanent political enemies and there are no political permanent friends. Hmm. Given the present context, it is widely considered necessary mm. for all political parties on the liberal, secular, inclusive, democratic, ideological front to come yes. together in order to oppose a common political opponent who seeks to threaten yes. all that India stands for, all that what the idea of India stands for. There is, there is today an overarching need for political parties representing one ideological formation to come together in order to but consolidate not, their but master Ashwini Kumar, and their vote bank. But as I said, but those, those, are very, said, those, are, those may be very the, worthy generalities, but that has to be translated into concrete action in terms of Rahul Gandhi, like Amit Shah goes around stitching up alliances. That's Rahul Gandhi's responsibility as the leader of the Congress to tie up these alliances. Has, uh, and it's just who, not happening. Who has just stopped at who has stitched up the 21 alliances that you just spoke about? Many of, them, many of them are with a question nowhere. mark next to it. Only two or three. And that also, uh, you can be certain that the creases will be sorted out. Okay. Why are you Where's assuming today that this will not happen? I have said that these are difficult negotiations. Right. We have to achieve diametrically opposite objectives. Right. So there are issues. It is, it is futile to contend that it's a straight game. It is not. So the idea okay. yeah. is to forge alliances, but to do that in a manner right. which does not decimate the parties in question. Mr. Badoria, you wanted to come in there. You see, well, the entire Lok Sabha election is important and all states are important. But look at the area, the region, where about 300 seats of which majority of them are held by the BJP in the North India, which is UP, Bihar. Uh, I would also include Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, uh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi. In these areas where uh, when Mayavati ji, well before the elections were hmm. announced, six months back, said yes. that if a settlement is made yes. and a respectful settlement, yes. depending on the strength of the party, yes. is made, we would like to have an understanding. But if you live uh, with an old feudal mindset that at one stage we were the lords and we will continue to remain the lords of this hmm. It doesn't work. The, the consciousness, the democratic consciousness of India has moved well beyond, far beyond. And now the Dalits, the OBCs and the weavers, the poor of this country, yeah. they are looking at, uh, in a sense that they want to be in the driver's seat, which the, uh, these major party, two parties don't understand. They are still living in the old feudal but mindset. But if I can ask, if I, but... Okay, you're saying that the Congress is stuck with the hangover of its past, but Aarti Janet, is it fair to say that at this point, I mean, because of this complete disarray within the opposition, it is very much advantage BJP, advantage Absolutely. NDA? Absolutely. Because, you know, Vasu, even if the BJP loses 
50, 60 seats. Say the Gatbandan in UP is successful yes. in bringing the BJP's yeah. numbers down by 40. And then, you know, it's sort of the little, little bits are chipped away at, yes. in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. It still so, has a good enough buffer. It still has, yes, yeah, exactly. You know, it would still be above 200. Hmm. And the convention is that the president will call either the single largest party yes. or the single largest pre-poll alliance to form the government. Right. And as things stand today, since you, SP, BSP and all are not part of any Gatbandan with the Congress, hmm. it stands to logic that the NDA will be the single largest pre-poll alliance right. and therefore will get a first shot at forming the government and okay. that gives it an advantage. Okay, let me try Even to go back if to... it doesn't have a full majority. Right. There are enough parties waiting on the side sure. to you know, join them. Right. Uh, Lanka Dhanakaran, <clears throat> let's try to go back to you. My question to you was that, again, I, I mean, I, do you also accept that there is a problem with the manner in which this Gatpandan has been able to pull it together? Sinwas, absolutely is wrong because we are very clean and clear that each state we are considering as separate unique unit. At state level, we fight against BJP and BJP P team like YSRCP and PRS. Yes. We get our figures at a regional level, we get tally our, our side, after the completion of 2019 elections, yes. we jointly put to hand together, we show our strength. Hmm. It is happens only after 2019 elections. So, at the regional level, we have our confidence to seize the BJP prospects. Okay. Definitely, we can stop the Narendra okay. Modi after 2019, right, we me... have our power. Okay, let me go across to uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam of the BJP who joins us. Uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, I wish we had you a little early on the show, but I'm, I'm glad we've got you finally. But uh, just to ask you that, what do you make of this? That at the moment, it may appear that the Mahagat Bandhan is not centrally unified. They all seem to be in disarray. Many alliances are still in shape. But if they drag you into a state-by-state -state fight... Yes. then the BJP might be at a disadvantage because they do have a bigger bench strength in terms of sheer numbers. You may have a leader, but they have the numbers. Vasu, uh, election is still quite a few days away. There's about 30 days left, I think, for the start of voting. And as you know, 30 days is a long time in, in politics. Now, I quite frankly, personally feel it's too soon to start making these assumptions. As voting starts and, you know, all your, we don't have exit polls anymore, but the trends at least would be seen. I think we'll have a much better idea. At the moment, both sides are looking for alliances. The BJP has been very frank about it uh, right from the beginning. Yes. And yes, you're true. At the moment, the advantage seems to be in the uh, side of the BJP. But, well, politics uh, is, can change in a week's time. And I don't think grandstanding by either side is going to help either of the sides. Okay, that's a very... Um, the uh, Congress seems, uh, or rather the Mahagatbatsam seems to be in a bit of a disarray hmm. because uh, different uh, uh, parties, leaders are speaking different voices. In UP, for example, despite the Gatbatsam between Mayavati and uh, yes. uh, um, uh, the SP Akhilesh, yeah. she is quite frank about keeping the Congress out, whereas he is just keeping quiet. So, let's see how it evolves. Uh, it does okay, look that's a little very dicey for the Congress at the moment. Okay, but that's as you know, it's been predicted realistic. that these elections will depend largely the result of right. it will, will uh, I mean, alliances will have a huge effect. Okay, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, that's very, I must say, that's remarkably so, uh, restrained of you. I think let's wait and watch. Okay, I'm not that's in very a hurry restrained. to jump to. Okay, that's quite I'm restrained of you. Ashwini Kumar. At the moment. Okay, Ashwini Kumar, as we run out of time, would you at least concede that at the moment it's very much advantage BJP, advantage NDA? Well, as uh, Lalita said, uh, three weeks uh, uh, is a long time in politics. Uh, as of wait, now, as uh, of now, for a few more weeks. No, as of well, now, I don't think so. I don't think. I I don't think so. I think, as far as alliances are concerned, we will be able to stitch up formidable alliances hmm. without ceding too much space uh, for our own party, and that is our hope. That is our objective, and I think it is in the realm of possibility. I will not hasten to pass any judgment uh, whether it, as of now it is advantage BJP or advantage UPA. Uh, I think only time will tell, but we are in the yeah. fight to win this fight and we are there um, uh, on the front foot. Now, Zudin Badoria, would you accept that if in this current situation, this, this is turning out to be a cakewalk for the BJP? 
in the present no, scenario uh, except that uh, i think uh, no i don't accept that i think uh, people uh, will look for a secular democratic alternative and uh, we are trying to like we have done in up and uh, we are trying to spread in other areas but there are people other than us also who are strong enough in some states where the non bjp the non congress people who are strong enough they mm. will be able to pull through like in bengal mamta banerjee is there left parties right. are there in kerala ksr is there in andhra similarly others are also there okay well you sound optimistic but we'll have to wait and see how that just actually one, unfolds just one point vasu if you if you let me yes very yeah, quickly just let very me make quickly one yeah point. i think we also need to keep in mind that there will be post look yeah we'll have to also keep in mind that there will be post electoral alliances also not everybody is tying up with everybody else at the moment uh, for example mamta west bengal of course but also andhra um, and uh, telangana etc so i think we need to also keep that in mind okay all right yes it is still very fluid but at the moment of course it does seem to be that one side has the edge we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds thank you all so much for joining us that's it on reality check thanks for watching good night